Hello, my friend. Today we're going to talk about recent market commentary. What's happening with the markets? What happened Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and the Fed meeting? Uh, and how it's going to impact interest rates, inflation? What's going to happen with the oil markets and supply chains? And the all important quantitative easing or tightening, I should say, geopolitical events with Ukraine, China, Taiwan, Iran, North Korea corporate taxes and government spending. This all impacts uh, corporate profits. And as it impacts corporate profits, it's gonna have an impact on stock prices. Uh, so, so first of all, um, Jerome Powell said uh, last Friday that uh, they're gonna tighten interest rates until inflation is under control, even if it causes pain in the economy. Pain means higher unemployment. And so uh, the market took that to, to, you know, to mean that, uh, that, you know, there's no longer the Fed put, as they call it. And so the market took a dive 3% in one day, as measured by the Dow Jones and the S&P and the major indexes. So um, what's really gonna happen to inflation? Uh, nobody really knows, you know. Oil prices have been coming down because uh, I think uh, probably because China is uh, is uh, growth is 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 being curtailed by their fight against the virus, and so that reduces the demand for oil in China and probably you know in other countries. And so that's, uh, that's making oil prices lower. And the, the Saudis are, are, are sensitive to this and they're seeing the futures market uh, reflect that. And so they're concerned. So they're talking about cutting. They're just talking about it. They're not actually doing it to try to talk the prices back up because they want to sell at higher prices, you know. But uh, the most telling thing that came from Jackson Hole last week was that you know, there are supply and demand imbalances in the market, and that's why prices are coming up. And so the Fed is trying to reduce demand uh, by raising interest rates, uh, but as the supply chain problems get resolved, you know, the supply will be more plentiful and the supply will increase and, and help in bridging the gap between supply and demand. And so that's gonna be helpful because it's not gonna, require the Fed to raise interest rates that much. And so uh, a lot of people are not talking much about quantitative tightening. I think that is going to have a major impact on the fight against inflation. I, th I think, in fact, if the Fed would not touch short-term interest rate and just do quantitative tightening, that would uh, increase long-term interest rates and uh, reduce the money supply and that is one of the ways of, you know, taking a bite out of inflation. Um, you know, when the Fed buys and sells securities in the open market, that's called the open market operations. That is the, the quantitative tightening when they start reducing their balance sheet and letting some of the mortgages they have and some of the treasuries just uh, mature and, and don't renew them. That pulls money away from the economy. And so it tightens uh, the financial markets. Geopolitical, you know, it's unpredictable what's gonna happen with Ukraine. You know, the war has been going on for months now. They are preparing for the war going into the winter time. That's gonna have some, its own uh, dynamics. Uh, but if the war in Ukraine gets resolved, you know, soon, then that's going to have an impact on the market. But who can predict that? You know, all these things are very unpredictable. You know, the, um, the federal government passed laws that are going to increase corporate taxes to a minimum of 15%. You know, would that cut into uh, stock prices? I don't think so. You know, whenever the government increases taxes on corporations, corporations simply increase uh, their the prices on their products to protect their, their margins. So increasing corporate taxes is actually bad for inflation. And then there's the government spending, you know, with the government cutting 
uh, student loans, that's actually, you know, it has the effect of, uh, you know, uh, damaging the fight against inflation because people are gonna have more money, people are gonna spend it, and uh, it's, it's bad for inflation. So, uh, you know, whenever the government starts investing in infrastructure and, and in uh, transfer payments to individuals, that tends to have a negative effect on inflation, meaning it increases inflation. So uh, sometimes, you know, uh, all these elements uh, affect stock prices in unpredictable ways, you know? For example, uh, sometimes it's the opposite that what you would think. You know, for example, a good economic report, like uh, employment increasing in July, um, or August uh, will have the effect of uh, reducing stock prices because the market interprets a good economic report as meaning, okay, the Fed is going to think that the economy is overheating and so they have to tighten. Instead of thinking, well, there's more people working, there's more income for people, people are going to spend more and corporate profits are going to go up. No, they think the opposite. So also whenever you have uh, you know, a high uh, inflation report, if it's lower than the year, than the, the one before, the year before or the month before, it's positive because it's moving in the right direction. You know, so the trend is important and you have to look at these elements in, in context to, to really figure out what's gonna happen. So the rate of change is important. So, so what happens, uh, you know, all of this, is going to help you predict short-term prices? No, it's not. It's actually going to help you explain what happened in the recent past because you cannot anticipate. There's a lot of unknown information. And so stop attempting to time the market, you know, because it's impossible to do in any consistent basis. Uh, you know, so all this discussion is very, very interesting but it's really unimportant to the long-term investor, you know? If you are watching all of this to try to decide whether to buy or sell your securities, that's not the right approach to doing it. You actually should have been buying the dips all throughout 2022 because the market has been offering you stocks on sale at a lower price than they were before. If you are participating in your 401k and you're putting money away every month, that's the best way to invest because you will invest over time and you will uh, not be leveraged and you will um, you know, have the benefits of the markets going up over time. So think long term, you know? The S&P, for example, went down 25, 24% at, at the low in, in June. And uh, ever since June has been going up, uh, it went up almost 17% uh, from the low. And right now it's about 12, 15% down for the year. You know, how is it gonna finish in 2022? Nobody knows, but it's really unimportant, you know? All you have to know is that within five or 10 years, it's gonna be higher. It's gonna be higher because the economy is gonna to continue to grow and corporate profits are gonna grow along with it. And higher corporate profits are going to support higher, higher valuations. You know, that's my two cents on this subject. You agree, you disagree? Drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. I want to hear what you're thinking. And if you agree or disagree and explain why, maybe, I, maybe you have a point and, um, and I can change my mind. I wish you the best, my friend. Be well.